In an earlier unit, we learned to harmonize the major scale. In this unit, we'll learn to harmonize the natural minor scale. It's essential to understand the harmonized minor scale in order to understand the harmonic structure of a song in a minor key. So like with major keys, this understanding provides the knowledge required to arrange, create solid chord parts, solo, and improvise. Remember, to harmonize a scale means that we build chords on each scale degree. So like with the major scale, in the natural minor scale, a chord built on the first scale degree is called the one chord. And to harmonize it, we find the diatonic notes from the scale that are a third higher and a fifth higher, and this forms a triad. And remember, a triad's quality is determined by the combination of qualities of the third and the fifth. A chord built on the second scale degree is called the two chord, and so on and so forth with each note of the natural minor scale, flat three, four, five, flat six, and flat seven. So the resulting seven chords are called the harmonized natural minor scale. It's really important to know that the notes we use to build each of these chords are all diatonic notes, meaning of the scale. So let's do one. Let's harmonize the C natural minor scale with triads. To harmonize the natural minor scale with triads, follow the same procedure used to harmonize the major scale. On the screen, you see the C natural minor scale with the scale degrees numbered one through seven. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, and flat seven. Notice that we have flat three, flat six, and flat seven, which is what's different from the major scale. So let's take the first scale degree, C. We find a note a third above C, and it has to be from the key we're in, which is C. That note is an E flat, and we call this the third of the triad. Next, we find a note a fifth above C, and it has to be from the C minor scale too, and that note is a G. We call this the fifth of the triad. Now, what's the quality of our triad? We analyze the intervals and then compare these two intervals to our triad interval formulas. So, E flat is a minor third above C, and G is a perfect fifth above C. We know from an earlier unit that a triad with a minor third and a perfect fifth is a minor triad. Our conclusion, the one chord minor is minor. Remember that chord numbers are notated with Roman numerals, and when numbering chords, we also write an abbreviation for the quality, as we did with intervals. MA for a major triad, MI for a minor triad, a plus for an augmented triad, and a circle for diminished. Let's do the two chord. We start with the second scale degree, which is D. We find a note a third above D, and it has to be from the key we're in, which is C minor. That note is an F, and we call this the third of the triad. Next, we find a note a fifth above D, and it also has to be from the C natural minor scale. That note is an A flat, and we call this the fifth of the triad. So what's the quality of our triad? We analyze the intervals and compare the two intervals to our triad interval formulas. So F is a minor third above D, and A flat is a diminished fifth above D. We know from an earlier unit that a triad with a minor third and a diminished fifth is a diminished triad. Conclusion, the two chord is diminished. We label it two and then a little circle for diminished. Let's do the flat three chord. Why flat three? Because it's built on the flatted third scale degree. We start with the flat third scale degree, which is E flat. We find the note a third above E flat and it has to be from the key we're in, which is C minor. That note is a G. We call this the third of the triad. Next, we find a note a fifth above E flat, and it also has to be from the key we're in, which is C minor. That note's a B flat, and we call this the fifth of the triad. So what's the quality of our triad? We analyze the intervals and then compare the two intervals to our triad interval formulas. G is a major third above E flat, and B flat is a perfect fifth above E flat. We know from an earlier unit that a triad with a major third and a perfect fifth is a major triad. Conclusion. The flat three chord is major, and we label it flat three major. Let's do the four chord. We start with the fourth scale degree, which is F. We find a note a third above F, and it has to be from the C minor scale. That note is an A flat. We call this the third of the triad. Next, we find a note a fifth above the F, and it has to be from the C minor scale as well. This note is a C, and we call this the fifth of the triad. So what's the quality of our triad? We analyze the two intervals, then compare the two intervals to our triad interval formulas. So A flat is a minor third above F, and C is a perfect fifth above F. We know that that is a minor triad. Conclusion, the four chord is minor in all minor keys, and we label it 4MI. Let's do the five chord. We start with the fifth scale degree, which is G. We find a note a third above G, and it has to be from the C minor scale. 
that note is a B-flat, and we call this the third of the triad. Next, we find a note a fifth above G, and it has to be from the C minor scale also. That note is a D, and we call this the fifth of the triad. And what's the quality of our triad? We analyze the intervals and then compare the two intervals to our triad interval formulas. So B flat is a minor third above G, and D is a perfect fifth above G. We know from an earlier unit that a triad with a minor third and a perfect fifth is a minor triad. Conclusion, the five chord is minor, and we label it 5MI. We should note here that the five chord in minor often appears as a major triad. This is the result of a brief appearance of the harmonic minor scale to affect the five chord only, and we'll discuss this later. Let's do the flat six chord. We start with the flatted six scale degree, which is A flat. We find a note a third above A flat, and it has to be from the C minor scale, and that note is a C, and we call that the third of the triad. Next, we find a note a fifth above A flat, and it has to be from the C minor scale also. That note's an E flat, and we call this the fifth of the triad. And what's the quality of our triad? We analyze the intervals and then compare the two intervals to our triad interval formulas. So C is a major third above A flat, and E flat is a perfect fifth above E flat. We know that a triad with a major third and a perfect fifth is a major triad. So our conclusion, the flat six chord in minor is a major triad, and we label it flat six MA. Let's do the flat seven chord. We start with the flat seventh scale degree, which is B flat. We find a note a third above B flat, and it has to be from the C minor scale. That note's a D. We call this the third of the triad. Next, we find a note a fifth above B flat, and it has to be from the C minor scale too. That note's an F, and we call this the fifth of the triad. So what's the quality of our triad? We analyze the intervals and then compare the two intervals to our triad interval formulas. So D is a major third above B flat, and F is a perfect fifth above B flat. We know that a triad with a major third and a perfect fifth is a major triad. Conclusion, the flat seven chord is major when we're in a minor key, and we label it flat seven MA. So in the C natural minor scale, and in all natural minor scales, the one chord is always minor, the two chord is always diminished, the flat three chord is always major, the four chord is always minor, the five chord is always minor, the flat six chord is always major, and the flat seven chord is also always major. So we say these chords are diatonic to the key of C natural minor. This is a really important point. If we repeat this process with the natural minor scale on any other tonic, the result will be the same. The one chord will always be minor. The two chord will always be diminished. The flat three chord will always be major. The four chord will always be minor. The five chord will always be minor. The flat six chord will always be major. And the flat seven chord will always be major. Memorize it. There's no way around it. But here's a little trick that might help. Remember that in major, the one, four, and five chords are all major triads. Well, in minor, the one, four, and five chords are all minor triads. 2 is diminished, and the rest are major. That's the flat 3, flat 6, and flat 7 chords. Later in this unit, we'll be learning about harmonic analysis for chord progressions in minor keys. This is a really important skill used for understanding what to play when improvising, playing chords, or arranging in minor keys. To do this, we'll need to know what the chords are in all minor keys. In other words, you should be able to answer questions like, what's the 4 chord in G minor? Or, what's the flat 6 chord in F minor? and so on and so forth for all chords in any key. Because key signatures determine the notes of every key, and because the qualities of the chords built on each scale degree is the same in all minor keys, any chord, one through flat seven, in any minor key can be identified easily. This helps us understand a chord progression in a minor key. But to get ready to do this, it's wise for you to quiz yourself on what chords are in every key. In other words, we should be able to answer questions like I just mentioned. When you memorize what quality chord is built on each scale degree of the harmonized minor scale, you can combine that with your knowledge of minor scales through your understanding of key signatures, and you can answer any of these questions. So let's try a few. What's the two chord in D minor? Well, first let's find what the second scale degree is in D minor. The second scale degree of D minor is E, and how do we know that? We know our key signatures. Now, what quality chord is built on two in all natural minor scales? Well, we know it's diminished. If the second scale degree is E and the quality is diminished, we know the two chord in D minor is E diminished. What's the five chord in E minor? Well, first, what's the fifth scale degree of E minor? 
we know it's B. We know it's B because we know our key signatures. Now, what quality chord is built on five in the natural minor scale? It's minor. So if the fifth scale degree is B and the quality is minor, we know the five chord in E minor is B minor. What's the flat seven chord in B minor? Well, first, what's the flat seven scale degree in B minor? It's A. And how do we know that? We know our minor key signatures. Well, what quality chord is built on flat seven in all natural minor scales? It's major. So if the flat seven scale degree is A and the quality is major, our flat seven chord in B minor is A major. What's the four chord in F minor? Well, first, what's the four scale degree in F minor? It's B flat. And how do we know that? We know our minor key signatures. What quality chord is built on four in all natural minor scales? It's minor. So if the four scale degree is B flat and the quality is minor, the four chord in F minor is B flat minor. What's the flat three chord in G minor? Well, first, what's the third scale degree, the flat third scale degree in G minor? It's B flat. How do we know that? We know our key signatures. What quality chord is built on flat three in all natural minor scales? It's major. If the flat third scale degree is B flat and the quality is major, the flat three chord in G minor is B flat major. What is the flat six chord in C sharp minor? Well, first, what's the flat six scale degree of C sharp minor? That would be A. How do we know that? We know our minor key signatures. And what quality chord is built on flat six in all natural minor scales? It's major. So if we know the flat six scale degree is A and the quality is major, the flat six chord in C sharp minor is A major. So what have we learned so far in this unit? The pattern of chords and the qualities resulting from harmonizing the minor scale is consistent in all natural minor keys. The one chord is always minor. The two chord is always diminished. The flat three is major. The four is minor. The five is minor. The flat six is major and the flat seven is major. There are situations in minor keys where progressions use a five major instead of five minor, and that topic will be introduced later. Know how to find any number chord in any key. So let's continue. Let's learn more about harmonic analysis, but this time in a natural key context. We're gonna develop the ability to look at chords on a chord chart and determine the minor key and the number of each chord, meaning is that the one minor, the two diminished, or the flat three major, etc. You'll remember we called the notes of the major scale and the chords that occur by harmonizing it the major diatonic system. Now we're going to learn the minor diatonic system. This prepares us to discuss chord families in a minor context. So, chords in the major and also the minor diatonic systems belong to one of three families. Remember, tonic, subdominant, and dominant. And let's look specifically at the chord families in minor. It's a very similar look to the chord families in major with a slight difference. The tonic family is the family of the one minor chord, and the flat three major is a member of the tonic family as well. Note that the flat six major chord is not here as in major. The subdominant family is the family of the four chord, and the two diminished chord and the flat six major chords are subdominant chords too. Note that the flat six major chord is the difference from major. And three, the dominant family is the family of the five chord, and the flat seven major chord is a member of that family too. So in minor, the tonic family is one minor and flat three major. Subdominant family is four minor, two diminished, and flat six major. And the dominant family is five minor and flat seven major. The number of a chord is often referred to as its function, remember? because function refers to the emotional effect a chord has on the listener when heard in the context of a key. So the function of a one minor or flat three major, both members of the tonic family, is to establish a feeling of home or rest. The function of a four minor, two diminished, or flat six major, all members of the subdominant family, is to give you a feeling of moving away from home. And the function of the five minor or flat seven major, both members of the dominant family, is to pull you back towards home. So if you identify a chord as a one chord, it means more than just a chord built on the first scale degree. It means a chord that gives a feeling of rest or home. That's what we mean by function. Similarly, if you identify a chord as a two chord, it means more than just a chord built on the second scale degree. 
It means a chord that gives a feeling of moving away from home. The number means more than the number. It's also a description of the emotional effect. If you identify a chord as a five chord, it means more than just a chord built on the fifth scale degree. It means a chord that gives a feeling of moving toward home. Let's talk about analyzing chords in a minor key. Again, this is called harmonic analysis. And remember, the ability to quickly analyze chords provides some benefits. Understanding the function indicates the family each chord belongs to, and therefore, its emotional pull. And this allows you to do the following. One, substitute a chord from within the family for the original chord written. This is called reharmonization, and we'll get into that in a later unit. And two, another benefit is using the arpeggio of another chord within the family as a melodic device. So let's get to analyzing chord progressions in a minor context. In other words, harmonic analysis. I've mentioned that it's common to see crude chord charts that have no key signature. We need a way to know what key the song's in. There are several ways to determine the key, and then as a result, the function of each chord in the progression. Like in major, in a minor key, don't assume that the first chord of a progression is the tonic chord, in other words, the one chord. It's more likely that the final chord in a progression is the tonic, but that's not always the case either. Let's use the same slow and methodical way to analyze chord progressions in a minor key as we did in major key. This is slow, but thorough. And to analyze a chord progression in a minor key, you have to know the harmonized natural minor scale. Let's analyze some progressions in minor keys. And the following minor key progression determine all the keys to which each chord could belong. The first chord in our progression is A minor. Second chord is F major. Third chord is E minor. The fourth chord is A minor again. A minor could be the one chord in A minor. A minor could be the four chord in E minor. And it could be the five chord in D minor. Let's look at the F major chord. F major could be the flat three major chord in D minor, could be the flat six major chord in A minor, or it could be the flat seven major chord in G minor. Next, let's look at the E minor chord. E minor could be the one chord in E minor, could be the four chord in B minor, or the five chord in A minor. And then again, the last A minor chord could be one in A minor, four in E minor, or five in D minor. Is there any one key to which all these chords belong? Yes, it is A minor. So to analyze this, A minor is one minor, F major is flat six major, E minor is five minor, and A minor again is one minor. A minor is a member of the tonic family. F is a member of the subdominant family, it's flat six, correct? E minor is five, so it's a member of the dominant family and A minor again, the tonic family. Let's do another one. The next progression has five chords. D minor, C major, B flat major, G minor, A minor, and ends on D minor again. It's a pretty good bet this is gonna be in D minor because of the last chord, but let's go ahead through the process. Let's determine all the keys to which each chord could belong. D minor could be the one chord in D minor, could be the four chord in A minor, or the five chord in G minor. The C major chord could be the flat three chord in A minor, the flat six chord in E minor, or the flat seven chord in D minor. The B flat major chord could be the flat three chord in G minor, the flat six chord in D minor, or the flat seven chord in C minor. The G minor could be the one chord in G minor, could be the four chord in D minor, the five chord in C minor. And again, the A minor could be the one chord in A minor, the four chord in E minor, or the five chord in D minor. And then the last chord, D minor, could be the one chord in D minor, four chord in A minor, five chord in G minor. What one key could all these chords belong to? It's D minor. So D minor, the first chord is one minor, that's a tonic chord. C major is a flat seven chord, that's a dominant chord. B flat major would be flat six major, that's a subdominant chord. G minor is the four minor chord, that's a subdominant chord. A minor is five minor, that's a dominant chord. And D minor is the one chord, a tonic chord. There are other clues in both of these progressions. Let's look at the clues in the second progression. 
Obviously, the last chord offers a clue, as it's often the tonic chord, but that indicator is not 100% reliable. Check out the roots of the G minor and the A minor. They're a whole step apart. There's only one place in the harmonized natural minor scale where two minor triads are positioned one whole step apart, and that's between the four minor and the five minor. The roots of the B flat major and the C major are a whole step apart, and there's only one place in the harmonized natural minor scale where two major triads are positioned one whole step apart, and that's between the flat six major and the flat seven major. So what should you know from this unit? The pattern of chords and their qualities resulting from harmonizing the minor scale is consistent in all minor keys. The one chord's always minor, the two chords always diminished, the flat three chords always major, the four chords always minor, the five chords always minor, the flat six chords always major, and the flat seven chords always major. And there are situations in minor keys where progressions use a five major chord instead of a five minor chord, and that topic will be introduced later. Know how to find any number chord in any key. Know the three chord families, tonic, subdominant, and dominant. Know the emotional effect of each family. Know which chords belong to each family in minor keys. In minor, the tonic family is the one chord and the flat three chord. Subdominant family is the four chord, two chord, and flat six chord. And the dominant family is the five chord and the flat seven chord. Know how to use the slow and thorough way to analyze chord progressions. We've reached an important milestone in harmony and theory now. We've learned basic harmonic analysis for both major and minor keys, so congratulations. Harmonic analysis is the beginning of a real understanding of what's going on inside of a song. Understanding the harmony will open your mind to options you wouldn't have without the knowledge. Practice analyzing all kinds of songs you already know. Find songs or parts of songs and see if you can figure out each chord's number. That's its function, right? and that tells you to which chord family each one belongs. Study hard, you now know both the harmonized major and minor scales, and that's a really big deal. We're starting to get somewhere now, so we'll see you in the next unit.